Hey, welcome to the Impact Lounge, the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. The following countdown is the 10 biggest stars to depart Impact Wrestling since 2018. Basically since Anthem took over the company. Now the results of this countdown were actually done by a poll when I polled many of my listeners. So I don't totally agree with every single placement, but these are the top 10. Bobby Lashley had a couple stints with Impact Wrestling and came a long way as far as both promo and in-ring work. He was also one of the biggest, if not the biggest name to still be with the company in the final days of TNA. Some of his biggest storylines included beating Kurt Angle in his final match, unifying the TNA World Title with the King of the Mountain and X Division Championships, and bringing Dan Lambert along with American Top Team to Impact Wrestling for an angle with Moose. Lashley's final days with the company included putting over Brian Cage on two separate occasions. He went from one of the most dominant champions in wrestling to working an unpopular angle with Rusev and Lana in WWE. One of the most organic characters in recent years, Ali started with TNA as the apprentice of Maria Canellis Bennett. The initial Ali character was a high-pitched, annoying heel who was aligned with not only Maria Kanellis but with Sienna as well. The former two-times knockouts champion began to get over with the crowd as she was oftentimes bullied by Maria, Sienna, and their later addition, Laurel Van Ness. She was also part of the extremely popular wedding angle with the aforementioned Laurel Van Ness and her real-life husband Braxton Sutter. Allie's character transition from apprentice to in-ring worker was one of the slowest burning impact storylines in history. She later aligned herself with Sue Young under the name Dark Alley in an angle where she sold her soul to Father James Mitchell in order to enter the undead realm to retrieve her best friend, Rosemary. Impact Wrestling was rumored to have chosen not to re-sign Allie due to no longer having anything creatively for her character. But in a recent interview, Allie stated that she departed Impact Wrestling to take on new challenges. Allie currently competes in the AEW Women's Division, mainly competing on AEW Dark. Pentagon and Phoenix initially came to Impact Wrestling to have a match at Impact's Redemption pay-per-view to face each other in a cross-promotional match for Lucha Underground. But when Alberto El Patron no-showed their tag match at Impact vs. Lucha Underground and was fired from the company, the match was changed to a triple threat in which Pentagon Jr. won the Impact World title but had one of the least memorable title runs in recent memory as Impact created was unsure on how to present his Spanish-speaking character on screen. He went on to have one of 2018's best feuds with Sammy Callahan, culminating in a mask versus hair match at Slamversary. Phoenix would have incredible matches with stars like Johnny Impact, Rich Swan, and Eddie Edwards. Once the Lucha Bros joined up as a tag team, they put on several phenomenal matches, including an outstanding feud with LAX, in which they won the Impact Tag Team Championship on one occasion. After about a year and a half with Impact Wrestling, the Lucha Brothers left to join the tag team division at All Elite Wrestling. John Hennigan made his first appearance with Impact Wrestling under the Global Force Wrestling banner when the company returned to the road and did several stadium shows in New York. John later appeared as a surprise member in the Bound for Gold Gauntlet, which set up an angle with the match's winner and new champion Eli Drake. Johnny Impact eventually won the world title from Austin Aries, but did his best work with the company when he turned heel on Brian Cage and aligned himself with wife Taya Valkyrie and Johnny Bravo. Impact would eventually lose his world title to Brian Cage, and in his final match with the company, he lost to Rich Swan when he challenged for the X Division Championship at Slammiversary. Johnny is currently rumored to have signed with World Wrestling Entertainment. The Smoke Show had an interesting run with Impact Wrestling after debuting with the company with the goal of making wrestling sexy again. Scarlett Bordeaux started off with Impact as a heel doing several backstage segments and vignettes and being a featured part of the show despite not actually wrestling a match for months. After launching a town search in which she declared herself the winner, Scarlett's popularity soon took off and Impact had to place her in a babyface role pairing her with Fala Ba. One thing Scarlett Bordeaux doesn't get credit for was wrestling in several intergender matches before Tessa Blanchard ever did it. Scarlett was a huge loss for the company because they had spent an extremely long time building up her character to be one of the top knockouts, only for her to request a release over her desire for a pay raise. 
Scarlett has recently reported to the NXT Performance Center and is rumored to soon take on an on-screen managerial role with NXT. Austin Aries won the Impact World Championship on his very first night returning to the company, showing that Impact was still struggling to break old habits. A-Double had a couple title reigns, but made a much stronger impression as champ when he turned heel and aligned himself with Killer Cross and Moose. The faction was fairly short-lived as Aries would leave the company following his Bound for Glory loss to Johnny Impact, in which he was seen shouting expletives to Don Callis and flipping off the crowd. Austin has recently stated that he intended to return to the company following the controversial finish, but was unable to come to financial terms on a new contract. Previous to the Bound for Glory match, Aries had a major confrontation with Johnny Impact at a business Hall of Fame ceremony that had the wrestling world questioning if it was a work or a shoot. The controversy was good for Impact Wrestling, but they were unable to capitalize since Aries would never be seen on TV again. A-Double had a brief stint with Ring Warriors and now competes in MLW. The Cowboy James Storm had a couple runs with Impact Wrestling and made noise when he returned to TNA during the live Pop TV debut after a couple matches in NXT. Storm turned down an NXT deal for a bigger money deal with Impact Wrestling. His title wins included the King of the Mountain Championship as well as the tag team titles with Bobby Roode, but never got that long world title reign the fans had been hoping for. He would later go on to form the DCC with Bram and Kingston, but after taking several early losses and suffering poor creative decisions, the faction which had so much potential fizzled out quickly, something that upset the majority of Impact's fanbase. The Cowboys' last high-profile match teamed him with EC3 and Eddie Edwards to take on Team AAA and Bound for Glory. Storm ended up losing a Loser Leaves Town match versus Dan Lambert after not being re-signed by Impact due to his big money contract. Many in the wrestling world feel that Storm has been blackballed by WWE after turning down their contract offer, but he now competes for NWA and most recently has held their national championship. The Namer of Dummies was one of the most universally popular stars on the Impact Wrestling roster, despite always performing as a heel. With an entertaining promo style often compared to that of The Rock, the fans constantly beg for Eli Drake to get a major push within the company. Drake was typically seen as a centerpiece, winning briefcases in three straight Feast or Fired matches, one being rebranded as Race for the Case, but never felt like a main event talent on television. Despite winning the King of the Mountain Championship and the tag team titles with Scott Steiner, Eli's ultimate accomplishment would be winning the vacant Global Force Wrestling Championship in a Gauntlet for Gold match. Although Eli Drake had the company's top prize, it never felt like the powers that be had the confidence in making him one of the faces of the company and quickly removed him from the main event scene after losing his title in just a few seconds to Austin Aries. Eli Drake was ultimately released from the company after several incidents, including his refusal to work in an intergender match with Tessa Blanchard, but now seems very content as one of the most featured stars for the NWA. Ethan Carter III carried TNA on his back through some dark times and is widely seen as the company's biggest homegrown star after the Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff days were over. EC3 debuted as the spoiled nephew of then-president Dixie Carter and quickly established himself as one of the best heels in professional wrestling. EC3's career boasts wins over the likes of Sting, Kurt Angle, and won the TNA World Championship on two occasions. His popularity skyrocketed, forcing a double turn with Matt Hardy, but the company failed in booking him as a top babyface, oftentimes placing him in the midcard. After losing to Lashley at Bound for Glory 2016, the company was unable to find anything compelling for him from a creative standpoint, and even turned him back to a heel but couldn't capture his initial magic as a villain. It was clear that EC3 had mentally checked out, and the company ultimately chose not to re-sign him and other stars due to their large salaries. EC3 is currently signed to WWE and is becoming a glorified enhancement talent. Santana and Ortiz debuted with Impact Wrestling as the new LAX and was aligned with Conan, Homicide, and Diamante. The team had attacked the popular Decay and was credited for retiring Crazy Steve from Impact Wrestling. The multiple time tag team champions went from the hottest heel act in the company to the hottest babyface team after a double turn with OVE at Bound for Glory 2017. 
The team would also go down as the last Global Force Wrestling Tag Team Champions in history and had classic feuds with not only OVE, but with the OGs and the Lucha Brothers. Ladder matches, barbed wire massacre, and concrete jungle matches left a lasting impression as LAX over-delivered as a team, but never got the credit from the wrestling world as one of the best tag teams in the world. Despite being offered top star money from Impact, Santana and Ortiz opted to sign with All Elite Wrestling and have aligned themselves with Chris Jericho's inner circle. With Impact Wrestling owning the name to LAX, Santana and Ortiz are now known as Proud and Powerful. All right, I hope you enjoyed. This is part of some new content that I'm bringing here to the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. So if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.